they found it. The tiny radioactive needle in a haystack. Could have been anywhere along a 1,400 kilometre stretch of highway between a Rio Tinto mine site in the Pilbara and Perth, and they chanced upon this five cent coin sized object just outside Newman, two metres from the road. Massive federal and state operation going on since Friday, major health threat to the community, and what's the penalty for Rio or the testing company SGS? A $1,000 infringement. That's the same fine the truckie would have got if he used his mobile phone while driving. You get a bigger penalty for having a barking dog, or unlawful fishing, and illegal dumping of rubbish. Loose change for big corporates. Or a moderate meth dealer. <laughs> The Ben Woodcock tale isn't from any criminal playbook that I'm aware of. Up-and-coming clothing designer moonlights as drug dealer and he's sprung by police with 800 large worth of meth in his undies. <laughs> Skips bail, flees country and years later, whilst living under the alias Matt Black, is filmed walking in Bali bloodied after a standoff in a street. <laughs> after 12 years on the run, is arrested while lining up at Dubrovnik Airport. I know. I was driving while hot. <gasps> and extradited back to Perth, where he admits to historical crimes. Quite the fall from grace. Well, Perth is far better at criminalising fashion than fostering it. <laughs> so it's always disappointing when we lose a genuine fashion entrepreneur. Woodcock's label, Illionaire, was doing quite well back in 2010, but apparently not well enough to sustain the then 30-year-old's love of the high life. Did you ever think that maybe there's more to life than being really, really, really ridiculously good looking? He learnt there was a better margin in crystal meth than in high fashion and had half a kilo of the drug down his dax when the cops pulled him over. That happened 13 years ago in the one Perth suburb Woodcock knew was capable of absorbing 5,000 points of meth. I don't think Benny was the sharpest needle in the sewing kit, but even he realised young, good-looking fashion designers are very popular in prison for all the wrong reasons. Prison changed me! So he jumped on a boat and headed overseas, spending time in Indonesia, the Netherlands, England, Greece and Spain. His life on the run ended on August 1 last year when Croatian police gave him some shiny new accessories. Cough him, Lou. He'll learn how long he'll be in prison in a few months. Sentencing date will be set on March 31. Very Wild West kind of story. Absolutely. The PM's in the Wild West at the moment. In WA to spruik his Medicare urgent care clinics. Like a hospital, but not really a hospital. Albe says it means we won't have to spend hours in an ED waiting room anymore. And that's true. We'll spend hours in an urgent care clinic waiting room because there are no doctors or nurses to staff them. That's a pity because it appears we're going to need them courtesy of a rise of something child health expert Jonathan Carapita says is the nastiest bug you've probably never heard of. Strep A is the throat infection that contributed to the death of Ishwaria Aswath. Cases are surging and the government is now on the hunt for a vaccine to stop the infection in its tracks before it's spread which is an appropriate segue for an update on Libby Metham's fight with the Klan. <laughs> Nick Duran is proving that sorry really is the hardest word. I'd like to take this chance to apologise to absolutely nobody. He's refusing to follow fellow Klan member Peter Collier and apologise for things he said in the shady group's WhatsApp thread. Libby clearly learnt a few disciplinary tactics while out and about at a childcare centre on Wednesday. She's now treating Nick like a naughty toddler and is refusing to let him out of his room and back into Shadow Cabinet until he says sorry. Are you ready to apologise? No. So far, he's refusing. <laughs> it's not that hard, Nick. This is a little boy that is out of control. Other politicians have done it. I said it, I was wrong, and I apologise. Maybe he thinks she's bluffing. She could be. Nick's trump card lies in three small but important letters that come after his name. He's the only Liberal that has a law degree, which means if he's off the front bench, the party won't have a shadow attorney general. Sean Sibma, who is a vet, will likely try to fill the void, but only as shadow minister for justice. It's just the vibe of the thing. Libs without a lawyer is like Labor without a union rep. It goes <laughs> against the laws of nature. Durant knows it and is eschewing sorry for another S word. She. He took to radio to say not only that he has nothing to apologise for, but also that the clan doesn't even exist. Mm, he might find a sorry deep inside him. Two needles in two haystacks in two days? I don't think so. <laughs> Never gonna happen. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.